Hanson Bay Wildlife Sanctuary is a place of incredible diversity. It's a wild place. We are literally on the edge of the earth. Sitting and looking at the ocean is mesmerizing. We're not only a nature-based tourism company, we're also a conservation company. When I came here and I saw the abundance and the diversity of the wildlife, I thought that this is a perfect opportunity to do well from doing good. In about 1950, when they were developing the soldier settler scheme, this land was actually rejected. So it remained as crown land until 1960, when this adventurous young fella from Adelaide by the name of Kay Gibbs decided to come over here and be a modern day pioneer. By happenstance, he chose Tasmanian blue gum as being the tree, uh, the primary tree that he planted for these long farm driveways. He discovered that Tasmanian blue gum was uh, a primary habitat for koala. Now, the driveways that we call the koala walk are, are the ancestral home to fourth or fifth generation koalas. The population continues to expand through our volunteer program, we do a, a weekly koala survey. The recent counts, we have averaged approximately 60. Hanson Bay is one of the best places in Australia to see wild koalas. It's the absence of roads and fences, predators and livestock, which allows them to naturally move about on the ground, which is really the, the essence of the Hanson Bay Koala Walk. In 1997, when we started the Hanson Bay Company after acquiring this land, we found that there were 10 kangaroos for every sheep. So we decided the sheep had to go. We had nearly 10,000 acres of land and as soon as farming practices ended, the wildlife just took the land back over. When we came back at night, we discovered that there were 10 wallabies for every kangaroo. I had a visitor who came to Hanson Bay last year from Texas. He wanted to know who mowed the lawns. All he had to do was come back at sunset and he'd see who mowed the lawns. So we are really proud of our nocturnal tour and we're really proud that it was recommended by National Geographic in 2015. The Hanson Bay Wildlife Sanctuary is like a nightclub. It really starts hopping when the sun goes down. If you go on a nocturnal tour, you will see an echidna and you'll see that it is as active at night as it is during the day. They don't appear to sleep on any sort of regular hours. They're at it all the time. When you're planning a trip to Kangaroo Island, if you're coming to see the wildlife and the wilderness beaches, spend a few nights at the Western End. The Hanson Bay cabins are located only 80 kilometers from the Kangaroo Island Airport on the southern tip of the Hanson Bay Sanctuary. We are surrounded by walking trails, including the Kangaroo Island Wilderness Trail. It's forever changing and the seabirds, the sea eagles, the osprey, seals, sea lions, dolphin, and a school of Australian salmon that often you can see from sitting in a chair on the veranda at your cabin. Kangaroo Island has the last strain of pure Ligurian bee in the world. We have been producing honey at Hanson Bay for over 10 years. It's a real farm to table product. Everything is done on site. It is organic, 
The bees forage from the native vegetation and it has to be some of the purest honey that you can buy anywhere. And it tastes great too. We opened the visitor center in 2012. We sell artisan coffee, a variety of hot meals during the day, and we also provide meals for our cabin guests for the evening. We're a primary stop on the Sea Link one day tour. We're strategically located between Seal Bay and Flinders Chase National Park, and we're a really good resting spot during times of rough weather. Some people stay for one hour, some people stay virtually all day. And for a $10 admission fee, it's an incredible value. By just walking around, you can have sublime wildlife encounters in just a couple of hours.